Welcome back, students. Virtual summer Mount University 2020. We are uh, we're rolling on. Uh, I cannot believe that it's week six. Um, and um, I got to tell you, this has been one of the most gratifying things that I've ever done professionally or personally. Um, it's been, you know, it's been a crazy summer for all of us. It's still crazy. But I got to tell you, uh, I'm so inspired by uh, the cards and the letters and the emails and the resumes and the LinkedIn that you guys uh, have been sending me. I hope I'm very helpful uh, in giving you response, particularly, um, you know, with the resumes. I've gotten a lot of great resumes. I've also helped, I hope, giving you guys a lot of great, uh, a great, a lot of great feedback. <clears throat> and we've had a just tremendous podcast um, and we'll talk about them, but uh, we had uh, uh, Jamel Hester, which is, you know, one of my, you know, best friends, closest friends, Coca-Cola company, David Pollack. Uh, if you haven't listened to that one yet, it's uh, just very inspiring about uh, life and, and love and how he pursues things. And, and, and obviously we're all in, uh, you know, some crazy town and crazy times right now. Uh, today we're going to teach uh, chapter six from the book, all about internships. And I'm going to teach it a couple of ways uh, today, a little more sort of uh, horizontal. I'm going to talk about virtual internships. I'm going to talk about how you describe those um, you know, on your resume. Also going to talk about when we get back post-COVID, hopefully one day we will. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, then the, the, the real pitch uh, for the internship. We're going to talk about some, uh, some things that we've learned within internship programs and other opportunities within um, college campuses and collegiate athletic departments, professional sports, uh, you know, as well, and talk about how in all of this tumultuous times and how in all this um, chaos that uh, there will be opportunity for you. Because I think one of the common threads that you're hearing from all of our podcast guests and you're hearing from me is that in chaos, there is always opportunity. And we've heard that, that, that you guys are going to emerge from this, uh, you know, like I said, my son Carter, 20 years old, uh, he's dealing with the same amount of uncertainty that you all are as well. So um, I understand it, it's personal to me, it's important. Uh, and, you know, just living, you know, day to day and you guys with your parents and your friends and your, um, you know, your classmates and all that, you know, uh, you know, being together, sticking together, uh, we are gonna get through this together. So um, welcome back. I mean, it's just been, like I said, it's been fun. And I also would tell you that uh, we are planning to uh, extend Melt University into a bigger and better format uh, coming into the fall. Uh, we're gonna probably add a newsletter. Uh, we're gonna uh, develop a master class type uh, video learning tool for you uh, that you can learn from the great ones uh, in, in all of these professional pursuits that we're talking about. Uh, well, hopefully we can uh, start developing an internship uh, pool for you, um, being a, a, a live or virtual ambassador, uh, financial opportunities for you when you go back to the campus. Uh, so a lot of really exciting things. The book is out on uh, September the 15th, which I'm honored about. I hope I get to come to your, to your campus and to your classes and, and talk about the book and, 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 and all that and continue to share with your friends uh, and classmates, all the great things and all the great comments repost uh, online because I, uh, I read them all uh, and they just absolutely inspire me and keep me going. So <clears throat> we talk about some of our successful Melt University uh, alumni. And we're trying to um, feature uh, two or three of them each week because I want you to know that there's going to be a path of progress and professionalism for you coming out of Melt University, coming out of college and talk about, uh, and I would encourage you uh, when we spotlight these alumni to reach out to them on LinkedIn and, um, and network with them as well. We're gonna talk about the internships. We're gonna talk about uh, what we uh, have been calling the low hanging fruit, which are the emotional connections that you can leverage for internships and job opportunities. Those low hanging uh, fruit would be a connection of mine on LinkedIn. Uh, a low hanging fruit for you would be um, uh, a, you know, like an Abby 
uh, Farrick, who works for the Falcons now. Hey, I know you were a Melt U intern. I'm a Melt U intern. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to network with you as well. And then leveraging those alumni uh, connections at your respective university. And so we're going to talk about that in the internship as well. But uh, uh, Abby was with us in uh, the summer of 17, which is amazing. She is a University of South Carolina uh, graduate, go Gamecocks, and uh, now it, it, and, 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 and went to work for the Jacksonville Jaguars. She's from Atlanta, wanted to come back home and went to work uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. She's an account executive for the Falcons. And so what does that mean? And so basically, Abby's on the front line of sales. She's a revenue generator. And obviously, hopefully one day we'll get to go back uh, in the, um, uh, you know, to live sporting events. But Abby helps sales, uh, season tickets, club level seats, suite tickets, and those types of things. And so she's on the front lines of generating revenue for the Atlanta Falcons. If you look up Mr. Arthur Blank and the Arthur Blank um, series of companies, he owns the Atlanta Falcons. He owns the Atlanta United and the MLS, Major League Soccer. Um, he owns the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And so everything about those organizations and that facility and that venue are driven obviously by revenue, which obviously we talk about, you got to sell the tickets, you got to sell the sponsorships, you got to sell the concessions, you got to sell the parking and those types of things to kind of keep those uh, lights on and, and that type of stuff. And so um, I love Abby personally. Uh, she was a hustler when she was here. She stood up above the crowd. Um, she's very, very, very uh, good. I stay in touch with her through, you know, the Falcons and, and hopefully we'll all get to go back down there one day. But but look up Abby Farrick, because she's been very successful. Another one of my favorites, David Coonan, K-O-O-N-I-N. Um, one of my one of my favorites, uh, University of Georgia has his master's in sports business. He got it online, worked hard at Ohio University. Uh, believe it or not, was here, it's amazing, 10 years ago, uh, 2010. He worked through the University of Georgia in sports information, similar to um, uh, how I did it at Auburn. We talk a lot about sports information. Uh, he worked at CSC as director of talent marketing. And now he is at a major Hollywood talent agency called CAA, Creative, Creative Artist Agency. That's another company you should be following uh, and follow David as well. He represents major broadcast talent, uh, Pat McAfee. He works with major, um, you know, major football stars, Saquon Barkley of the Giants. And he would be a tremendous guy uh, to network with uh, as well. But, uh, but again, the experiences that you and our past students are getting through Mount University, um, you leverage these connect connections and leverage these relationships and leverage that emotional connection. Ryan O'Connor was here actually last summer, graduate of Kennesaw State University, um, just a great guy. And he, but he volunteered for the Super Bowl when it was Atlanta. He volunteered to be on the promotional staff at the Atlanta Braves. And now he sort of has uh, Abby's role uh, in for the Atlanta United. So he works for Mr. Blank as well. He's sort of more on the fan services. And what we mean when we say fan services is that the minute you go through that, that gate, um, you may have wants and needs and demands, whether it's uh, concessions or the restroom line or, or those types of things. And so um, again, Begin networking with your fellow Melt U alum, because in two weeks, you will be a fellow Melt U alum uh, as well. So um, our podcasts have just been amazing. I don't know uh, uh, who enjoys them more, me or you or the people that we're talking to. Um, we interviewed, uh, well, we dropped yesterday, um, Jamel Hester, as we said, Coca-Cola Company, uh, David Pollack. Uh, ESPN College Game Day, but what an inspirational story. Um, first round NFL draft pick, uh, basically breaks his neck in year two uh, of being with the Cincinnati Bengals and how he uh, not only had to relearn, you know, basically basic motor skills, but uh, he was out of football, which is the only thing basically he had known his entire life uh, and how he pivoted, went all the way back, started at 790 The Zone in Atlanta, and then continued to work his way up. And, you know, now he's obviously an outstanding uh, ESPN uh, analyst. And um, tomorrow, the president of the Coca-Cola company, my dear friend, Jim Dinkins, and my other dear friend, Auburn Athletic Director, Alan Green. 
whom, as we've talked about, we have gotten so much great valuable information from Alan, Ross Bjork, uh, Greg McGarity of how many other new and emerging opportunities there are within the athletic department. And, and I actually have been enlightened myself, uh, mental health, compliance, fan safety, uh, name, image, and likeness. That's another one I encourage you guys to look at. I uh, had two fascinating interviews yesterday. Mark Charty, big time famous Hollywood producer. You're going to learn a lot about Hollywood tomorrow. And Reese Davis, who also is very prominent, the host of the ESPN College Game Day, University of Alabama graduate, wonderful, wonderful man. And we've got some other fun ones coming up. Robert Irvine of Restaurant Impossible, David McKillops, the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese. I think we've all probably celebrated some birthdays uh, there over time. As we talked about uh, Mr. Blank's organization, Tim Zulowski, my dear friend, who is in charge of all revenue for Mercedes-Benz Stadium and a wonderful story of how he worked his way all the way up. Uh, Shannon Watkins, head of marketing for Athlete. Uh, Steve Phelps, the president of NASCAR, he talks about careers in auto racing. It's just so much fun. And in all of this crazy time, Commissioner Greg Sankey, of the SEC and, and, and what a wonderful inspirational story. I mean, just such a grinder out of his comfort zone, um, you know, was from upstate New York, moved to uh, Louisiana and started his clear and started his climb. He's a value-based servant leader, wonderful human being uh, as well. And so I just want to tell you, I appreciate um, all of your sharing of your podcast, all of the shout outs, I encourage you guys to keep doing it because we're monitoring it. We're grading you. We're going to reward you out of that, sharing with your friends, extending um, this past these eight weeks because I want to continue to help you, whether you're on campus live this fall or learning virtually. I want to be a part of that process. I want to be a part of that learning. We've got some great fun things and surprises for you. And also share these with, uh, with your parents, with your friends, with your classmates, with your teachers, with your uh, head of career services. I really, really uh, appreciate all the kind, uh, kind words. And so building brand new chapter six, we're going to talk about um, the internships, but it's crazy town right now. We're all doing a virtual internship program right now. Think about that. But we've made uh, lemonade out of lemons in this, which just gives me such great delight. And so uh, we're going to talk about, I want to talk about how you talk about your internship on your resume. I want to talk about uh, the, the turbulence ahead that we're all going to have to navigate and sail through. I'm going to talk about um, how you position this virtual internship. And then, and then uh, when you uh, go back to school, it's never going to be too early to begin that process. And we're going to talk about how important that is, particularly now in this period of uncertainty, but on the, in the spirit of chaos and opportunity, I'm finding more and more that uh, people that maybe we couldn't have gotten to in a, in, a, in a physical live format, they're a little more open now to responding to you on LinkedIn. They're a little more open to responding to you on a Zoom. They're a little more open to you um, on an email. So we gotta give you those tricks of the trade as we say, to get that attention. And so take advantage of that to begin that dialogue, to begin that relationship um, with the people online. And I think probably a couple of reasons for that. One, kind of we're all in this together. So we all kind of have an understanding. And also with all of us working virtually and at home, um, you're not in the office. You're not in this big daily flow of all these back to back to back to back meetings. You're working virtually and so the access to a lot of executives that heretofore um, you may not have had. So again, I, I, I honestly, long-term, I'm very bullish about your opportunities in the world of internships. And I'm very bullish about your opportunities in the world of employment, because as I keep telling you, and I want you to, to, to remember this, you are the most sophisticated consumer that there ever has been because of the advent of the cell phone and the social media and all those types of things. And I'm gonna show you a couple of headlines uh, and but but I, I want you to I want you to take this as a as a positive. Here's a headline from uh, Sporty: Pro sports organizations to experience significant employee turnover over the next 18 months. 
Now, you could take that headline as a negative. I want you to take it as a positive. You begin thinking about all these other new opportunities that we've talked about, uh, whether it's mental health, whether it's compliance, where it's fan safety, where it's data analytics, where it's under, uh, understanding who's buying that, where it's creation of content. You know, the NBA's in a bubble down there. It's going to have to be the whole thing is driven by content, content and contextual ex content and contextual experience. So, but you being that sophistication as opposed to somebody that may have been rooted in these jobs for five, 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to be in a position of success here. So I want you to begin looking at all of these things as a, as a half full approach. And you know, I'm here for you for that. And then college students left frozen by job market are forced to pivot. Didn't even know where to begin. Here's the great news for you. You do know, right? You're not frozen. You're not frozen because you're on this podcast or the video cast today and you do know where to begin. And that's why, like I said, it's just been it's so gratifying that, um, that to being able to share this experience with you. And like I said, you don't have any idea how much it means um, that I hear from, from, from all of you. And I encourage that. And I think I told you early on that I would make sure that I responded to everything that you guys uh, sent me. And so chapter six, building brand new, book out on September the 15th, book it down, write it down, we'll come to the campus. All about internships. Meredith the Era, very famous uh, broadcaster, talk show host, wonderful human being. Her quote, do, do internships and work your butt off to learn as much as you can and prove yourself. That's the theme of our program this summer. Do they matter? Absolutely, they matter. And like I said, today we're going to talk about uh, the real world of virtual internships. We're going to talk to you how to position your experience with virtual melt you because because the interesting thing is when you send these resumes out, maybe last year had you said you'd done a virtual internship, that wouldn't have mattered to anybody. That wouldn't have mattered to an employee. It wouldn't matter to a, a human resources director because that was a, that was a foreign language to all of us. I had, we had forty kids here last summer. So it's not going to be, you know, I get a lot of questions from you guys that go, you know, like, how do I describe this? And is this a good thing? Am I still getting experience? Let me tell you, absolutely, um, you are. And, but the way you package and position this experience and your other experiences is going to continue to help you get in that upper 5% um, of that. And so um, I'm going to scroll through, uh, I'm assuming by this point, you understand the way you spend your time during your college years is going to determine how employees see you later. We've talked about that a lot, right? Um, you know, show the effort, show the initiative, uh, show the self-starting. Um, and because the meaning of a virtual internship right now is taking a whole heck of a lot more meaning. Then we're gonna talk about, because the same tips that are going to apply to virtual internships and gaining those are going to apply when we all get back sort of back in the real world and real internships uh, apply as well. And I'm gonna tell you another thing I'm thinking about and it, it kind of just popped on me as we were talking today. A lot of companies probably this summer were not prepared for virtual internships. They're gonna wanna build programs around virtual internships as well because a lot of companies are not going to be coming back into their offices for a while for, you know, for, the, for the COVID. And more companies may begin more virtual uh, offices as well. So a virtual internship is going to become commonplace. And what I'm so excited about is that think of how far ahead that you already are. And we're going to talk about that in just a, a minute. Let's talk about let's talk about the process. Let's talk about the process. Go back to that slide, Zach. I think. Let's talk about the process of of of, of the internship because I'm going to tell you another thing. Um, there may be fewer physical internships ever until we have a vaccine. Uh, there may be more virtual internships 
um, because of obviously the trends where these things are going. But when I say start early, I want you to start now. Not only thinking about your fall opportunities, your holiday opportunities, and your spring and summer opportunities, but I want you to start right now. And if you want to do an internship with a particular company or a particular sports organization, begin the process of reaching out right now on uh, either in a virtual format or in a live format. And let me talk about that too. Um, and, it, and, it, and it makes me crazy, like, like, like when we would have our fall, uh, summer program, which would start in June, I'd get, I'd, get, I'd get cards and letters in February and March, and I'm like, man, that ship sailed a long time ago. So start early in the process right now thinking about who and where you want to do either a live internship when things come back or a virtual internship. And, the, and this is sort of kind of number two kind of goes around do your research and know your target. The lowest hanging fruit for you to reach out is through my relationships and connections on LinkedIn, because you can say, hey, I know you're linked into Vince Thompson. I just completed his virtual Melt U course, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, uh, begin studying the connections within the alumni of your respected school. And the alumni departments at all these schools do a really good job of talking about very successful alumni. Um, whether it's their magazine, whether it's their website, whether it's their newsletters, um, and go back and read some of the past ones because the universities want to tout the success of a famous alumni, but you use that as an emotional target, low-hanging fruit. Random example, Jim Dinkins went to the University of Georgia. If you reach out, or David Pollock, you reach out and say, hey, even if you didn't go to that school, but let's say you went to Georgia, hey, Mr. Pollock, Mr. Dinkins, go dogs. Uh, I'm studying journalism at the University of Georgia, and uh, I really, pre I really, really loved your podcast. So all of a sudden, what have you done? You've made an emotional hook, and you're showing them that you've done your homework and your research on them, and you're showing them that you were in the virtual Melt U program. So all of a sudden, on the come out, you, you've gotten yourself ahead of that process. And as we talk about, and you hear it in all the podcasts, you hear it in everything I say and do, every form of communication that you're having with a potential intern program or an employee is an audition. And we may think about, oh, it's a Hollywood audition or singing competition audition or something like that. But, but this is far more intense because this is an audition for your first job. And, you know, as I've told you many times, and I'll continue to tell you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The job in the internship market is going to be very, very brutal for the next 12 to, to, uh, to 18 months. Go back, go back one more. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, it's going to be brutal because, you, like I said, you got, you're going to have more and more people uh, questioning their uh, college investment. You're going to have more and more people that do or don't like to learn virtually. You're gonna have more and more people who are out of work in marketing services and sports who would be willing to take a lesser job at a lesser price uh, to get their, you know, to get a, a job and get the foot back in the door. And that possibly could be a job that would have been filled by one of you out in the marketplace. And so, um, it, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating, challenging, hard dilemma. You've put all this time in, you've invested all this money, all these resources, all your savings, maybe student loans and all those types of things. And then all of a sudden you got this whole new layer of the tumble cycle. But again, we're gonna to continue to equip you with those tools. But, and also we talked yesterday and I, I, it may have been um, Reese or um, it may have been Mark, but leverage even your family connections. So what I want you to do is sit down with your folks, sit down with your friends, and, and, and it's an interesting exercise because a lot of times you don't really know or understand what your friend's parents do, but start kind of keeping a list that says, you know, hey, uh, what's your mom or dad do or, 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 you know, a family member? Do they, do they work for Coca-Cola? Do they work for the Falcons? You'll be surprised, I call it, you know, the, uh, hunting and finding Easter eggs. You'll be surprised how many of these connections kind of start, um, uh, how to kind of start kind of coming together. I'll give you a great story. 
I got very dear friends in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Lisa and Jeff Cook. Uh, they got a, a great daughter, Brennan, that goes to the University of Alabama. And through those connections, when I used to live in Birmingham and I knew her parents, Brennan and I have started a dialogue um, because she, she even made a major shift from, if we talk about you know, finding your way on campus and all that, she started in nursing school or started to be a nurse then wanted to be in PR. So then we started kind of talking about how to form her brand and how to form her brand message and how to communicate that on a resume. But she also started saying, you know, hey, give me some good connections in Birmingham that you may know that I can, that I can go talk to. So also began kind of, I call it a professional list or professional Rolodex because you never know, may know where an opportunity is lying right under your nose and we all want to help. And so I get a lot, a lot of parent uh, connections, but again, that's an emotional connection. If I went to school with, with somebody 30 years ago who's at Auburn, whose uh, son or daughter wants to reach out and talk about careers in sports marketing, of course, I'm going to take that call. Of course, I'm going to take that email uh, as well. So leveraging those emotional connections, that leveraging those alumni connections, that is very, very low hanging fruit uh, as well. As we say, make, uh, make it personal. Again, you're showing effort. I, I think you guys are all familiar now with my pet peeve is when I get a, because uh, I see all of our corporate emails, careers at Melt, info at Melt, internships at Melt. Uh, hey, this is Joe Smith, attached is my resume. What do you think I'm going to do with that? I'm going to immediately flush it as opposed to somebody either working hard to track me down through LinkedIn and, um, and say, you know, Hey, Mr. Or, or find my email. It's really not that hard to find all this stuff now. Hey, Mr. Thompson, War Eagle, congratulations on your success. I'm working my way through Auburn university of Georgia, go dogs. Um, this is the type of, you know, I'd, I'd love, and, and, and by the way, sometimes it's okay to set up the target or warm the target up for these internship programs. So you don't necessarily have to sort of, you know, your first pass is, I'd like some advice. Hey, by the way, does your company offer virtual internships? Hey, by the way, we're all in a, a giant shift from live internships to virtual internship programs. I had a very successful experience with Melt University virtually. I listened to some of your fellow employees on the podcast. Uh, what, what, how are you going to proceed with virtual internships? Because like I'm telling you, I know a lot of companies out there that probably uh, this thing hit so hard in March, um, they didn't have the time to pivot their uh, internships into a virtual environment. We were fortunate enough to kind of be nimble enough to sort of uh, pivot into that. And so many of our, our friends have volunteered to be on the podcast. It worked out perfect. I was able to get this book written and those types of things. But so I will tell you, there's probably going to be more and more opportunities for virtual internships. And another thing that you may want to think about is um, if and when you go back to college this fall, you actually can have a couple or three bites on the apple, right? So you can probably do some, some real time volunteering at the um, athletic department or the event department or whatever student government department, whatever it is. Um, you can also continue our Melt U virtual program. You can, you're also going to be continuing your studies. You also can begin reaching out to your other targets and dream jobs and dream companies because over time, they're going to evolve and do their virtual internship programs as well. And then hopefully we get to the other side of this in 21, you'll be in a very, very good position for your networking, your contacts, and to convert, you know, hopefully next summer we have real live internships again, and we'll do virtual internships again. So I want you to sort of begin rethinking your mindset in this approach, because, you know, uh, we're, all, we're, we're all going through the same thing together at the same time in real time. So as much anxiety and angst and uncertainty as you may have, trust me, I got the same, I got the same amount, your parents have the same amount, your classmates have the same amount. And if you're taking this advice, convert that back out uh, to your classmates and give them a helping hand up, um, you know, as well. And so, um, and as I said, the kiss of death, the kiss of death, do not apply blindly or generically for anything. Jobs, I'm, I'm getting them every day from people going, hey, I'm, 
you know, here's my resume and I need to make X, Y, Z dollars. I'm like, you're showing me that effort on your first communication with this organization. You're not going to get a foot in the door. And I've hearing, I've been hearing back from a, uh, from a lot of you of, of how you're begin to, beginning to tailor your approach. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you a couple of other things I want you to think about. I want you to look through and I want you to think about your success in, in high school and college. And I want you to begin using some of those elements to frame up your story. Uh, for instance, my man Q, I like to, I like to pick on uh, my man Q. Uh, buried in his resume was the fact that he was an Eagle Scout in 2015. Well, first of all, that's a heck of an accomplishment. Secondly, there is a bond among fellow Eagle Scout recipients, an emotional bond. It also shows that you, you, you worked your, your, your fanny off to earn all of those merit badges to get to the level of an Eagle Scout. I'll pick on Brennan again as well. She was a very successful soccer player, very successful. She's also been very successful in um, pursuit of Miss Alabama and Miss America and all those types of things. And I don't can classify those as beauty pageants because there's talent and grades and perseverance and training and preparation. And so, so when I wrote her back on her resume, I encouraged her, I said, you know, hey, look, without bragging, just bring that up that, you know, you were a very accomplished soccer player. You've been very successful uh, in your quest to be, you know, Miss USA and those types of things. And, and you're going to find those emotional spark plugs within, and it doesn't have to necessarily be Eagle Scout or, 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 or pageant queen or all-star soccer player. Um, I mean, I was a very accomplished fisherman and believe it or not, when I was growing up and I won awards and I won tournaments and I talked about my love of the outdoors. And when I got my first job out of college, it was with a sports marketing firm that did a, had a lot of fishing clients. So I was able to leverage those emotional connections. So I want you to think through, um, I want you to think through that. I want you to think through though, now that very, 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 very hard because I'm seeing a lot of your resumes, but you're, uh, we call it in the old days of journalism, burying the lead or burying the headline. Sometimes within those resumes, there's some of the greatest nuggets that allow you to make um, those emotional connections. For instance, when you hear Jim Dinkins tomorrow, his father um, was a Methodist preacher. So if you're doing your homework and you're diving deep, you can mention that in your application for your internship program or your job program. My dad was a small time mayor. If I know somebody's digging that deep to find out those types of things, you're showing me what type of employee or intern that you're going to be. And I don't think that I can stress this enough or 9 million more times, follow up, follow up, follow up. Go out, get your little business card printed, get you some nice note cards like you had to write on for your, uh, hopefully you thank for your, your high school graduation or your college graduation. If I were you, I would find out where I could find every one of these podcast uh, participants that we've had I would write them without attaching a resume or anything, just enclose your business card in there and write them a personal handwritten note. Let them know how much you enjoyed uh, their time. Hey, Mr. Pollock, really enjoyed your podcast. I'm looking forward when game day is back out uh, to meeting you when you're on the campus. Get that to him. He'll read it. He'll go, huh, that's pretty impressive. And by the way, you can write two or three lines. It doesn't have to be like, you know, uh, an epistle because uh, you're showing that effort you're showing that you cared then that's softening the target and then maybe a few weeks later hey mr pollock reach out on linkedin or send him your resume after we worked on them and we tooled them say you know hey i loved your podcast i can't wait to see you when you come to campus uh amazing that you over over uh, overcome uh overcame a broken neck uh, I look forward to communicating with you and building that relationship, building that repertoire, building that rapport, either through LinkedIn or Twitter or DM or, or Instagram and, and those types of things um, yeah, as well. Um, we talked about uh, Claire Ellender a couple of weeks ago, uh, but, and we had a live interview for her intern program. Chances are you may not have a live in-person interview for an internship or a job, but you may have a Zoom call and let me tell you the same rules apply. No matter what format, 
or medium or media that you're in. What do I mean by that? She looked me in the eye in the interview. She brought the heat. She was buttoned up. She was polished. She had softened the target up in advance of coming here. She had written me an email. Um, she had sent me a resume. She showed up with her resume. And so um, I was like, wow, you had me a hello. You're showing me what type of intern or what type of employee uh, that you're going uh, to be. And so uh, I thought today was very, very important because we are all pivoting in the new world of virtual and virtual reality and virtual fans and everything virtual. So it may not be the same for a while and it may not be the same ever again, but, but even if you're doing the application process for an internship, even if you're doing a Zoom interview and those types of things, what, that, what you're seeing in that camera, um, you, you gotta bring the heat, you know? Uh, don't have your phone with you, don't look down at the phone. Uh, look that camera in the eye and make that personal eye connection uh, with, with that because um, again, I'm very, very, uh, uh, I'm optimistic about your future uh, long term, and I'm more optimistic now that given the sophistication of who you are as a consumer, you're actually going to have more and better opportunities to get ahead with these internships um, and these uh, and these jobs. So, um, do we have any questions today? I think we probably do. Griffin. Thomas, what are your thoughts on a recent college graduate entering graduate or law school as opposed to looking for a level job in this uncertain time and tough job market? That's a great question. Um, if you can afford to go do it right now, I would tell you to go do it right now because there's, you, you're probably looking at a period of uncertainty in the economy probably within six to 18 months at least. I think we're gonna to continue to make a gradual progression, but probably not to the other side of 22. And so if you were all, all, all able now to get that master's degree or that law degree, you're probably not gonna to be too far behind the eight ball. And um, I forgot who we were, who we were interviewing. We've interviewed so many people on the podcast, but, and there's two schools of thought. In the old days, the, the major companies would say, get your undergrad, go work three or four years in a, in, a, in a practical job experience, get your MBA and then go apply for a brand manager. I think all those rules are gonna be off the table, by the way. Uh, and then also given the, the, the period of uncertainty uh, and then the school of thought is, hey, you know, while you've got the momentum of being a college student, student while you're in that groove, while you're, you know, while you're in sort of that, that process of that pace of that cadence of that rhythm, go ahead and continue that uh, and obviously it, it, it's economics, it's finances, it's can you learn in a virtual environment back on campus and those types of things. But, but what I would tell you is my gut says to probably go ahead and continue your educational pursuits right now. Hi, Emma. Emma, uh, I think Filderman. Uh, is there a certain um, platform, email or LinkedIn that you prefer to receive resumes and messages from students? Um, I will, you know, and, 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 and there are a group of professionals like myself who is the biggest believer in the world in LinkedIn. I'm also a believer that if somebody takes the time to reach out to me on LinkedIn, that I should give them the respect and courtesy of the time of giving back of that response. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big proponent initially of LinkedIn, but let me tell you a, a couple of tips on the LinkedIn, for, you know, particularly like uh, is your company offering virtual internships and those types of things. Um, I get a lot of generic solicitations on LinkedIn and I don't even read those. And so you've got to, you got, you got to make it personal as we talked about. You got, these are busy people too. So you got to make it short and sweet. And on the first pass on LinkedIn, I would not attach my resume. I would just simply say, Hey, Mr. Thompson, here you go. Uh, congrats on your success or whatever it is. And then um, I'd like to establish a communication with you or something uh, on LinkedIn. And so uh, don't attach the resume on the first one. And I usually, you know, I usually reach back out or hit you back. And, um, and then I kind of move on down the road. So now some people are not going to hit you back. And of course, I, I, I think that's, 
really not nice. I think if, if you've taken the time to reach out to that person, they should hit you back, but it happens to me all the time too, by the way. So as we say, don't take it personal, but um, if they don't, and, and by the way, if they don't hit you back, they, they probably don't share your values anymore because of the, the values of common courtesy and response and respect and reciprocation and all those types of things. Then a couple of weeks later, say with me, for instance, follow back up and says, you know, with a quick question, Hey, do you mind if I send you my resume for a job or virtual internships or just to look at or keep on file? Or is there anybody else that you may know within your network who might fit these job skills? And I may know somebody that's already a, uh, you know, an Eagle Scout, and I'll connect you to and those types of things. And, but, and also, too, <clears throat> as I said, not necessarily just Vince Thompson's LinkedIn page. Between Vince Thompson and, and, uh, and Melt, we've got over 25,000 people that you can go mine and you can go post. And some of you are doing better than others on saying, hey, great lunch and learn, looking forward to lunch and learn, great podcast with David Pollack, Jamel Hester, whoever that is, because you're beginning to kind of build that, the, build that network. Because you don't know who within my professional network is reading what you're saying. And I've gotten some inspirational emails and, and, and links from you guys, which I then turn around and repost on all of my social media platforms. And you got 40, 50,000 people who are seeing that. And you never know when you're going to sort of light that fire, strike that match and, and hit that emotional cord by somebody going, man, I want that person in my organization. Or when I'm able to hire again, that's the type of person that I want in there. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a big LinkedIn guy, obviously. Hey, Drew, how you doing? Um, asking everyone at the end of these podcasts who their favorite celebrity entertainer was they have interacted with, worked with. Who is yours, Mr. Thompson? Wow. Man, I, I hadn't been asked that in a while. Um, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you, well, I've got two or three. Um, Ryan Seacrest is the consummate professional. And if you want to study somebody who made the most of his internship, Ryan Seacrest is from Dunwoody, Georgia intern for star 94 and now he is a gargantuan entertainment mogul uh we worked with ryan several times on, on the final four and i call him one take ryan because i mean the guy is just amazing on the camera um i've got some fond memories of my early days with lebron james i uh, i worked on the uh, mcdonald's all american and i think it was 02 or 03 it was in cleveland and he was uh, he was a senior and he won the dunk contest and um, it was just amazing. It was his hometown and, 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 uh, and, and by the way, he's 18, he was 18. And then the Coca-Cola company si assigned him. And one of my first jobs was to work on some promotional opportunities with him in Powerade. And I'll never forget, we, we, we had him into Atlanta at the Coca-Cola labs and we were building his own personal uh, Powerade flavor, FLAVA 23. And we're building into a superhero, King James and all that. But I remember sitting in this room with him he's 18 and he's playing himself on uh, nba 2k and i'm like this is so out of body uh so uh that was a that was a good one too um let me think about this thing too we did uh we did one of taylor swift's first concerts in 08 in san antonio she was 16 and she probably won't remember this but um she asked me could she meet the band that she was opening for three doors down and i i, I never forget just that sweetness and that and that and that honesty in there um let me think of a couple more uh i've been to i've been to I've been, i went to school with charles barkley uh and he still remains a dear friend of mine but also one of my favorite people because he hasn't changed who he is um from 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 day one uh, I did have the opportunity to work with Michael Jordan in 1995 when I was at the Hell South Corporation. Um, and if you haven't watched The Last Dance, and you don't necessarily have to go um, watch all of it, but there's a couple of things that stick out. You need to go watch the episode where um, the Air Jordans became famous. I think it's maybe number three or four or five. Um, and then, And then, but also through that, even the great Michael Jordan got cut from his junior high basketball team. He got back on that saddle, see where he is today. But the, that competitiveness, competitiveness and that drive uh, and that relentlessness as we talk about, whether you're Michael Jordan or, you know, my man Q, it's all the same. 
So, so I, I've been fortunate that I, um, that I have been able to, uh, to work with a lot. Darius Rucker uh, of Hootie and the Blowfish and, and, and Darius is probably one of the nicest consummate um, professionals that you'll ever encounter. Um, and just a, just a wonderful human being, you know, giant pipes and all that. But I, I, I have been blessed to, uh, to have worked with a lot of celebrities. But as I've told you many, many times, they're just people too with these rare gifts and talents that they're, you know, able, but, but what I've learned about all the great ones is that they may have had that talent, but that drive and that relentlessness got them to the top. Um, I actually had a, uh, shared a, a private plane ride one time with Garth Brooks and the way his mind, it thinks it's like in three dimensional. Um, he's, he's, he's a pretty, he's a pretty special, pretty special character too, and study him from a business perspective. It's not an accident that he is um, where he is, but overall most appearances have been, uh, have been, uh, have been pretty, have been pretty positive. Fergie, I did a, a concert with Fergie and Slash in Detroit. Slash was really cool. Fergie's amazing. Um, and then uh, we were out on a tour with the Black Eyed Peas, Will I Am, he's just a wonderful guy. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I've been blessed to have, you know, to around them again, they're also people, and I always try to treat them as people and humans. And and I think Jeff Cottrell shared that great story on the podcast where he was backstage with Paul McCartney that time, and they were exchanging pictures of kids and grandkids. And it was just it was just such a, a sweet story. But but uh, Drew, I could go on all day about that. Obviously, hey Kelsey, um, how you doing uh, for this internship specifically? How would you recommend us wearing the job description on your resume? Man, I'm glad you asked that because I forgot. I got so tired of what I was doing. So the first first thing is I would say um, I would uh, in the header I would say something like Melt and Melt University, and then I would give a brief descriptor descriptor of of who Melt is. Melt is a leading sports marketing agency who's represented Coca Cola for twenty years, and um, and then obviously. It, you really don't have to say due to COVID-19, they pivoted their, their internship virtually. It kind of goes without saying now. So what I would tell you is uh, just say, um, participated in Virtual Melt University, had a perfect attendance or near perfect attendance with their 50 podcast. And then I would mention two or three names within the podcast that might be, and you can switch them out on your resume. that might be relevant to who you're sort of targeting. So you could say, including... Auburn Athletic Director Alan Green or Coca-Cola President um, Jim Dinkins or Hollywood producer Mark Charty or those times he's kind of cherry pick them depending on who you're sort of approaching and then also you know um, had a perfect attendance in a weekly lunch and learn series leading into uh, Mr. Thompson's book building brand new and those types of things so um, you're you're communicating and a lot of times people you'll be sending this resume to they, they may have known Mel or they've interacted with Mel or me or something like that. And so, uh, but also take that time, you know, to find that common ground and kind of describe that. But it's also showing that you didn't just really waste away your summer or sleep away your summer or video game away your summer and those types of things. Uh, and, and, and also sort of keep it, keep it brief and keep it concise. But you're also showing that you did uh, that effort. And then, you can also link that back to my followers on LinkedIn and Melt's followers on LinkedIn. So you got that common emotional hook in there. Does that make sense? So I'm glad you asked that because uh, uh, I had forgotten to say that, but I'm getting that question a lot, but it's, it's also showing that you made an effort during the summer, during these trying times, because, you know, there hadn't been a lot of, there's obviously not a lot of jobs for, for you guys out in the summer, like they typically would be. Uh, and so um, you're showing that you made some form of effort and connectivity uh, in that process. Mr. Thompson, what information do you think we should include our, on our business cards? You know, honestly, I would keep it, I would keep it simple. I, you know, simply uh, your name, uh, you, know, you know, if you're at Alabama, University of Alabama class of 2021, your cell phone number and simply your email. So if you encounter David Pollock, you can say, Mr. Pollock, may I have your, uh, your business card? Now, on the other side of that, you may, if, if you happen to be a good artist or you want to put two or three bullets that you were an Eagle Scout or soccer star or 
second runner up Miss Alabama pageant and those types of things, you can put a, a, you know, three or four bullets on there, or you can put like your favorite famous quote or saying, um, you know, one of mine is, you know, change is inevitable, growth is optional, choose wisely and attribute that to a person. On the other side of the car, just sort of use it as another billboard or an anecdote to give them sort of a flavor of either who you are or how you think or your philosophy on life or, or those types of things. So I hope that that kind of makes sense. And, uh, uh, but make it, keep it simple and, you know, put some funky colors on it and all that. So it kind of, or a different, you know, uh, maybe a different uh, size. So it's not just a, it doesn't get lost in somebody's wallet. It might be a little block or rectangle or something like that. But uh, uh, this has been a great session. I was very inspired to talk about it today. Like I said, the, the grand pivot into internships and virtual internships programs. I hope this has been very helpful. Uh, I've got great podcasts coming um, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. Next week's Lunch and Learn will be next Thursday. I'll be out of town next Wednesday. So uh, we'll get some information and, and notices out to you on that as well. But uh, thank you students. Uh, summer, virtual, melt you, 2020, we roll on.